Hey everyone, what I have on the table is, I, is what I think is the most special telescope out on the market. Um, this is my William Optic Space Cat 51 and after owning this for two years, for the last two years, I think this is a good time to talk about why I think st still to this day this is the most special telescope out on the market. This is the one that I use the most in my collection. And this is the one that I'm not going to sell ever. Um, so yeah, so in this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about why I think it's so special. So let's start with the specs. In case you've never heard of the uh, William Optics Space Cat or the Red Cat 51, um, this is a 250 millimeter focal length uh, refractor. So you're talking about really wide field and you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can't get up close and personal to a lot of the uh, deep sky object. You know, what, what good is that? Well, I actually think this is why it shines because at 250 millimeters, um, you're so wide field that if you pick your targets correctly, you can actually more than likely fit multiple objects in the same frame. And I think that provides a very unique perspective. Um, and you know, if you're into wide field astrophotography, then this is where this telescope shine. Um, and on top of that, this is a relatively fast uh, telescope at f ratio 4.9. So you don't need a lot of ex uh, long exposure time to complete your uh, well, your exposure uh, because it's a relatively fast telescope at f 4.9. But most importantly, and this is this is the main reason why I always recommend this to beginners because this is a Petzfeld design telescope. What that means is that you never have to deal with a field flattener and therefore you never have to deal with back focus. Anyone that's watching that's dealt with back, uh, with back focus or field flatteners, you know that it's one of the most annoying thing to deal with, uh, especially if your telescope doesn't have a dedicated field flattener, you, you sort of have to figure out which one works with what telescope. And then after that, you gotta figure out the back focus which is just, it's annoying. I, I hate doing it and I, and I wish that all telescope on the market will come as a Petzfeld design so that it's ready to go right, right out of the box. And this is why I always recommend this to beginners because you know, it is a Petzfeld design so you don't have to deal with uh, field flatteners or back focus and it's lightweight so that for beginners, you don't need to get a ginormous mount to be able to use and enjoy this. This will happily go on, as I've shown in the past, this will happily go on with most star trackers out on the market. And I personally think that for the cost to performance ratio, I'm not sure if there's anything that can beat this at the moment. And this is this is an old, this is, I think by now, this is a pretty old telescope. Um, I've been using this for two, year, for two years, but it was released before I got into the hobby. So, um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about why, or well, I sort of, I've sort of started talking about it, but I want to spend more time to talk about why I think this is such a special telescope. And I would highly recommend anybody, beginners or not, if you don't have one of these, try and get one. So with that being said, let's go outside and uh, start setting up my session. So for tonight's session, I'm sort of also doing this as a farewell for the uh, summer nebulae that's been staying with us since, you know, as early as May. And, you know, the one cool thing about the summer nebulae, especially if you're familiar with the Cygnus region, is that there are so many areas where, you know, if you have a wide field, uh, wide field optics like the William Optics Space Cat 51, um, 
it's just such a cool area and cool time of the year to uh, to image because virtually anywhere you point there's something interesting especially if you're doing either narrowband or in my case dual narrowband and really highlighting a lot of the hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 signal and I'm going to be doing that with the Optolon L Ultimate that I'm uh, that I'm using. Um, I, I'm going to have a full review of that filter coming up soon. Um, I did a sort of first look in a couple couple videos back. Um, I'm still enjoying it a lot. So, um, but look forward to a full review of that filter coming up soon. Um, but for tonight, what I'm going to do, and it it will really highlight why. I don't think I'm ever going to sell the William Optics Space Cat 51 because at 250 millimeters of focal length, pair that with a APS-C sensor, uh, you get a really nice wide field image. And it's one of the few systems, unless you go full frame, um, but you know, I can't, I can't really afford full frame and all the accessory that, that goes with supporting a full frame camera. Um, this optical train, 250, milli, 250 millimeters and APS-C sensor, it'll give you a really nice wide field, um, field of view. And what I'm going to image tonight is going to be a combination of the North American Nebula, which I've imaged in the past, and also the Pelican Nebula that I've also imaged in the past. But tonight, I'm going to fit them both in the same, uh, in the same image. And that's what I really love about the William Optics Space Cat 51 because it's, um, I think it's one of the few telescopes that helps you provide a different perspective. Um, I think that, you know, when you're able to image two different objects in the same frame, you get a different feel of the scale and the size of these images because, you know, most of us know that any particular nebulae in the night nice sky we're talking about a, a, a size and a distance of you know on the scales of light years you don't really get that uh, sensation when you just image one object but when you have multiple objects in the same frame then at least for me you get a very unique sort of perspective because on one hand this object is already light years wide and then you have another object right next to it that's also x light years y so you get a really nice feel of just how large of a scale that you're imaging so to me that's one of the many many reasons why i don't think i'll ever i'm ever going to sell the william optics space Cat 51 okay so as i plan out tonight's session i want to take more time to talk about why I think the William Optic Space Cat 51 is, uh, well, it's a really special scope for me. And I think that, you know, if you're, if you're doing astrophotography, I really do think that everyone should have a William Optics, uh, well, you can't get the Space Cat anymore because that was a limited release, but I think everyone should get a Red Cat 51 because, you know, it's such a it's such a versatile telescope um i have it mounted on probably one of the lightest and the smallest equatorial mount that you can get the skywatcher star adventure gti um, and this is this has a payload capacity of 11 pounds which is just about perfect for the uh william optics red cat 51 and you know you don't need a giant mount to use this telescope and I think that is such an awesome, um, is such an awesome characteristics of this refractor because you know if you're just getting into the astrophotography and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money into this hobby, you know you can do so much with this telescope when you pair it with just a lightweight, relatively inexpensive uh, equatorial mount such as the Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI, and so that's. That's another reason why I think that, you know, if you can really try to get your hands on one of these uh, refractor and, you know, even if you are not like super into wide field astrophotography, 
Uh, the fact that you can mount such an awesome refractor onto a tiny mount like this and just essentially turn it into a workhorse, um, I think that's a lot of value there. So as I plan out this session, you know, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to really just, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say about this telescope other than, well, I mean, it's just an awesome piece of equipment because you can do so much with it. You don't need to have a whole lot of mount to use it with. So, you know, yeah, I, I really enjoy using the telescope. So uh, I'm gonna finish setting up my session and hopefully I can uh, show you a decent picture later on. Okay, so I know I talked about um, how awesome it is to have a sort of a wide field telescope and why the William Optics uh, SpaceCat 51 or the RecCat 51 is such a versatile telescope because you can mount it on a tiny equatorial mount or a star, or a star tracker or you know as big of a mount as you currently own or you want to get. Um, but I think it's it's worthwhile for me to talk about, you know, the amount of objects that you can image with the Red Cat 51 at 250 millimeters focal length. Now that may not sound like a whole lot, but um, you can actually do a lot with it. Uh, for example, you can fit objects like Orion and the horse head in the same frame uh, if you have an APS-C sensor size. Um, if you have a smaller sensor, then you can, you know, you can essentially crop in even further to, you know, get some of the uh, smaller object. Um, so, um, and you know, the 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 best thing that this thing can do, it's obviously a wide field astrophotography. You know, fitting multiple objects at the same time. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to shine in uh, solo sort of objects like I've shown you in the in the past, such as the. Uh, the California Nebula and you know if you have the resolution on this telescope the optics on this thing is so good that even if you were to take a wide feel and you sort of have like you know artificially or you know in post-processing to sort of uh, crop out the edges so you only see you know what you image um, you know even if this thing even even if I only image Orion with this thing uh, you're still gonna see great details because um, I I think the optics in this thing is really good and um, yeah there are just so many objects that you can image with especially when you, uh, when the winter nebulae winter winter night sky uh, it's starting to become more and more accessible to those of you guys in the northern hemisphere I know this video is sort of focusing on the um, on the final summer night sky project that I'll be doing for 2022, but rest assured, I'll be using this telescope a lot once the winter season comes. I'll be using it for California Nebula, which I imaged in, uh, in, the, in the last video, but I'll be imaging again, I'm sure of it. Um, be, I wanna be imaging the Orion Nebula, I'm gonna be imaging the, uh, the Horsehead and Flame Nebula, uh, just to name a couple. Um, rosette, uh, jellyfish, there's just so much you can do with such a wide field astrophotographer, uh, astrophotography uh, telescope. So obviously I love the telescope. So um, if I sound a little biased, it's, that's because I own it and I use it and I love it. All right. so. It's about 8 p.m. and um, I'm all set up. I'm actually already imaging right now. So this is probably gonna be the last image from the summer nebulae that I will be imaging from my backyard. And from, from here on out, it will be nothing but the, uh, the winter objects that I'm super looking forward to. And I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts and views about the William Optics Space Cat 51 and why it's probably the one telescope that I'm never ever going to sell and it's such a special telescope for me. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have a telescope that for whatever reason you just love and cherish and 
kind of like me, you'll never sell that telescope for any reason. And I'd love to hear from you. And so I hope that tonight I'm going to get a pretty decent image. Uh, but, you know, the North America Nebula is already past zenith. So I'm thinking from this moment on, I'm probably only going to get like a few hours of imaging uh, with this object. So hopefully I still get a decent image and hopefully you guys will like it. And um, with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Take care and clear skies everyone. Bye.